Okay, so I'll just pause there. So we've covered now our DC2 lemma and characteristic direction methods. Um, any questions on those before we uh, move on? All right, so um, yeah, so we've covered these three different DGE methods, just kind of as a taste of some of the many that are out there. Um, but here I just want to mention some useful practices that are often built into many of these differential gene expression uh, packages. Uh, but you can also do these uh, pretty easily on your own if they're not already built in. Um, so one of these steps is to do uh, some gene filtering. And uh, this can be useful because it reduces the number of tests we need to conduct. Um, and generally, we want to remove genes that we really don't expect to be uh, differentially expressed. So those are usually genes with uh, zero or very low counts. Um, and then uh, another filtering step we can do is at the sample level. So uh, one thing uh, to check first is uh, the library sizes across samples. Um, so uh, there we can see, uh, firstly, just the variability in library size and how normalization is uh, correcting for that. Um, and then also if there are any examples with very extreme library sizes, uh, then we might suspect there was some underlying issue with the data quality um, and we might want to remove that sample. Um, and in general, you should consider removing any uh, outlying samples where you suspect um, there are, you know, like technical failure or errors that are really going to bias your analysis. Um, and then uh, another sort of important visualization uh, that you'll see uh, very commonly done is to visualize the distances between samples in relation to uh, different experimental or clinical variables to see if there are any confounding factors. So uh, there's a lot of options for how to do this, but uh, PCA, Disney, UMAP are probably the most uh, popular of these dimensionality reduction methods for RNA-seq. Um, but what you'll do is you'll uh, plot all your samples in this uh, lower dimensional space um, and then if you have a whole bunch of experimental variables, you can kind of color the samples um, by uh, those different variables um, and look at sort of the patterns of clustering. So um, for instance, if you see something like this, where your samples uh, show very clear separation by a certain uh, maybe a clinical feature or just some other uh, variable in your data, then if this is not the condition that you're actually testing, then this is something you, you're going to want to control for in your analysis. Uh, so you want to make sure that uh, when you're inferring those log fold changes or uh, the differential gene expression, that it's actually due to the condition you're studying um, and not uh, potential uh, other variables like this that are driving the differences uh, that you're seeing. Okay, so for visualizing the results of a differential gene expression analysis, um, one of the most popular types of plots um, we've probably seen in publications um, and such is uh, this volcano plot. So for these, the log fold change is plotted on the x-axis, um, and then the statistical significance is plotted on the y-axis. Um, and usually this is shown as the negative uh, log 10 of the p-value. So larger values here um, are more significant. And generally, they'll have this symmetrical V-shape. Um, and most of the genes um, should be uh, near this junction at the bottom here. So these are uh, genes that are not differentially expressed. Um, and then our upregulated genes will uh, show up towards the top right, and then downregulated genes towards the top left. Um, and usually, Along with these plots, there will be some kind of log fold change and p-value cutoff that is indicated um, to show uh, which genes are being selected as uh, differentially expressed. A uh, second useful plot is the MA plot. Uh, so M uh, stands or represents the uh, mean expression intensity uh, or the counts. And then A is the log fold change. So uh, A is on the uh, y-axis, and then this average expression is on the x-axis. Um, and this type of visualization, it can be useful if 
Um, you want to see how the data are distributed uh, along these different expression values. So we can see um, genes with higher counts uh, towards the right side here tend to have more stable estimates, whereas the genes with lower counts are much more spread out. Um, and then most genes, uh, as we saw with the volcano plot, most of the genes should be non-differentially expressed and should lie right around the uh, x-axis or the zero line here. Um, and then those in red that are above the x-axis are upregulated, below the x-axis are downregulated. Um, so this plot that I'm showing here, this comes from the DEC2 paper. And uh, so on the left here, this is what the MA plot would look like without any shrinkage applied to the log fold change estimates. Um, but on the right, after the shrinkage is applied, uh, you can see all those genes with high variance and low counts um, were either filtered out or pushed towards zero. Uh, so you get this change in the shape of the MA plot. Um, so this is uh, a good way that you can check um, whether the shrinkage was applied and what exactly it did to your data. Um, and in the notebook that we'll go through later, uh, we'll demo both uh, this plot and the volcano plot. Okay, so um, we've discussed uh, all these methods in the context of bulk RNA-seq uh, differential gene expression. Um, so this is, but by bulk RNA-seq, I mean RNA that was sequenced from samples consisting of uh, many cells under the same conditions. But um, in the past several years, we now have um, really popularized uh, single-cell RNA-seq. Um, so this is a uh, powerful and popular new technology that we can also do uh, differential gene expression with. Um, so one way that uh, DGE has been done with um, bulk RNA or with single cell RNA seq is uh, to use it to identify uh, cell clusters. So basically, with um, unlabeled single cell data, you can identify what genes are differentially expressed in a certain cluster of cells. Um, and then use those differentially expressed genes to then do enrichment analysis and predict what cell types the cluster might consist of. Um, so that's one an application of DGE for single cell data. Another application is to do cell type specific differential gene expression. So basically this is something you would do after your cell types have already been annotated. Um, you could look for uh, like biomarker genes that are differentially expressed um, in one cell type, but not another. Um, so these are sort of uh, two ways in which DGE analysis is relevant to single cell data. Um, and initially, uh, DGE with uh, single cell uh, has been done by just borrowing our popular bulk RNA-seq methods and applying them directly to aggregated counts from multiple cells of the same type. So uh, this sort of approach is called pseudo-bulking, um, and it basically allows us to apply the exact same algorithms and packages we were using for bulk RNA-seq um, to the single cell data. Um, but now we are uh, seeing some more uh, single cell specific methods, um, and a lot of these will use what's called uh, mixed effect modeling uh, to essentially estimate a set of fixed effects, which are uh, the conditions of interest. Um, and then there will be a random effect component that accounts for the other sources of variance, um, of which there are many when it comes to single cell data. Um, but in general, this is still a relatively new area and methodology um, that's uh, certainly like under development uh, right now. Okay, so just to wrap up now with some uh, key points that we've covered today. So first we introduced um, just this goal of differential expression analysis, which is uh, to identify genes that are expressed um, at significantly different levels between biological conditions. Um, and then we went over uh, where this sort of fits into the bulk RNA-seq analysis pipeline. Um, and we covered these three algorithms for DGE. So first we have DEC2, which assumes a negative binomial distribution for the counts. 
um, and applies a shrinkage to both the log fold change and dispersion estimates. Uh, and then we have lima voom, which assumes a normal distribution for the log counts per million, and it applies a shrinkage to the variance estimates. Um, and then we have a characteristic direction method, which is a geometric multivariate approach um, that characterizes differential expression as uh, a vector in gene expression space. Um, and then lastly, we went over these useful visualizations, so volcano plots and MA plots. Um, and we learned that these bulk RNA-seq methods have also been applied to single cell RNA-seq uh, through an approach called pseudo-bulking. Okay, so these are some uh, resources and references uh, for you guys. So the first few, or the first one is uh, from that study about biological replicates. Um, and then the second through the fourth papers are um, the references for those, the three methods that we talked about today. Um, and the, so five and six are some resources related to DEC2 and Lima. And then seven through nine are some single cell uh, differential gene expression methods. Um, at the bottom here, we have uh, these two tools that I linked. Um, so geode is the uh, implementation of the characteristic direction method. And we have uh, an appeter that we've made that uh, performs bulk RNA-seq analysis and does a lot of the steps that we discussed here today. <laughs>